Hey everyone, this is Chris and Sandy with the Chris and Sandy Show. We get up close and personal with some amazing guests throughout the entertainment industry. And today, like I said, every episode, who do we have coming back? Oh, we have one of our favorite returning guests, Janelle Arthur, with us today. She was a top five American Idol finalist, and she is a Grand Ole Opry favorite who starred in the movie Running From My Roots alongside Janine Turner, Dina Carter, and Neil McCoy. And she has a newly released song called What Would Dolly Do? And we're going to talk about all of that and a lot more and bear Yay. with us because we ain't done a show in two weeks because yes, we've been on a big weeks. nashville trip and all that so we <laughs> yes. might be a little rusty so we welcome to the show welcome that's back. all good we're all rusty here then <laughs> <laughs> so um i guess i want to start the show different to what because usually i talk about covid but we talked about that the year Last ago time. Mm -hmm. um right what's happened to you since we last talked a year ago my goodness, um, since we talked a, lot, a year ago, did was my song Hand Me Downs out yet at yeah. the time? Yes, was, it was just, I I just released it. Because okay. I think we, I looked on the thing and I think a couple days from now will be the one year anniversary of you coming on the show. Oh, yes. wow. That's so awesome. Yeah. So I did release a duet with Dolly Parton and it's called Hand Me Downs. And uh, so that was, you know, one of the biggest highlights of my career and uh, probably the most um, important song. I feel like I've ever released. Um, <clears throat> shortly after I released the song, I discovered that I was pregnant with um, oh, wow. a, a little baby. So oh, wow. Congrats. congratulations. Thank you that. so much. So I actually did a reveal. I kind of revealed the baby bump, if you will, um, in my music video for Hand Me Down. Oh, so it was yeah. so special because I didn't even know this at the time of filming the music video. Um, I got done with the music video filming and then I had my uh, one of my ultrasounds and, um, oh, wow. and they told me that um, I was having a little girl, uh, oh. which the song talks about if I ever have a daughter of my own, which is kind yes. of crazy. And then oh, I found wow. out that the baby was due on Dolly. <laughs> birthday oh wow. oh wow oh that's and amazing. so that was that was one of those things that you're just like i'm exactly where i'm supposed to be <laughs> yes in my yeah. life at this time just for everything to just kind of be so connected in a mm -hmm. very profound way i was just like wow this is crazy so that's kind of what's happened and she was born three days before her due date so oh, wow. just living this just missed it uh just, <laughs> just it. yeah she honestly I mean, I was trying to get her to come on because we had a snowstorm coming and we were thinking, okay, we got to, I got to work out. I got to get on this, you know, the bouncy ball thing and, yeah. and eat spicy foods and do all the things mm -hmm. <laughs> go into labor. So, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, such a, such a blessing. And so I'm here now doing the mom thing. And at the same time, my music and just released a song called what would Dolly do? And so kind of living, living my, my dream, honestly. I mean, there are a lot mm -hmm. of things that I didn't know if I'd ever accomplish and here I am. So, and I love that. That's perfect segue into where I want mm -hmm. us to go. Cause as you know, a lot of people, they see the glory in that, but they don't see the grind that it takes. And a lot yeah. of times people think that once you've made it to a certain level, like you have, they mm -hmm. think, Oh, well, then it becomes simple. So how has this last year been for you within the music industry trying to balance everything? Let's talk a little bit about that side, the sacrifices and struggles you've had to go through in the last year to do all this. Yeah, well, the industry has just changed a lot since COVID. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people had prior commitments, you know, with um, they had to they were committed to doing these shows back in 2020 or, you know, 2021. And um, then COVID happened. And so a lot of things have been pushed back. A lot of people are now uh, having to fulfill their commitments with these artists. And so I think touring for me has been the biggest difference maker here. Um, it's just not as available right now, just because people are kind of saying, Hey, we owe you this show from 2020 or 2021. We had to postpone. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's been a huge, a huge um, disadvantage, you know, right now with, with everything, but um, yeah, it's just, I've had to continue just to <clears throat> keep going and get, I've still been in the studio a lot and, even in my first trimester, I think I did about 40 shows. Oh, and wow. so um, I just, I just kept 
on a truck. And so I don't really know how to do anything else. And I just want to, uh, I just want to kind of find a way to, to keep getting my music out there. And so I'm so grateful that I signed a record deal with um, Black Sheep Record Label, uh, label group. And they've just been incredible to me. They believe in me. And even with all the craziness going on in the world and then in my life to have people that, that still want to be invested is huge. And I, I prayed for that. And, and I'm just so grateful for them. Because yeah, sometimes people pray for things and when they get it, they complain about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and there's, there's always a place that you can complain. My friend and I were <laughs> just talking about that. Um, you know, I, I, I was telling her, you know, well, if you, but she was saying, I, I, I want to, you know, complain about this right now, but if I had that, then I wouldn't be complaining. I'm like, no, you would get all of that and you'd still find something else to complain about. Cause that's just kind of how we are. And, and that's we're true. always looking for that next best thing. Mm -hmm. so, uh, recently I've been thinking a ton about how the fact that, you know, I've got this song, what would Dolly do out? And, and how one thing that I think that Dolly is so incredible at is um, I don't think that she ever feels like, I think she always stays impressed with everything that's going on and she never just She's thinks humble. old news. Yeah. yeah. She never just thinks, Oh, been there, done that. Oh yeah. People have told me a thousand times that I'm incredible. I've heard it all. And, 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 you know, nothing, you know, sometimes we get to the point where we think nothing is a big deal anymore. It's not a big deal when it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so I think that she continues to think things are, you know, a big deal. And, it's one reason why I say that is because she actually responded to hearing what would Dolly do. And her response just blew me away that she is still wow. that person oh and she is still that humble. So, yeah. you know, we're going to be launching a new kind of um, show attached to this mm -hmm. called entertainment horror stories, where we read people's horror stories within entertainment and wow. kind of give our um, commentary You're going to a lot of those stories. <laughs> and, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is um, when you look back in your career so far mm -hmm. um, and however long that's been, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've got many of them. What's a horror story that's happened? No names, of course. Right. But what's a horror story that's happened to you in the past that might motivate somebody to say, you know what? I've been there, too. Hmm. Well, oh man, there's a lot. There are a lot of things that come to mind. <laughs> and it don't have to be a hardcore horror. It could just yeah, be a, just something just a small that, horror thing where you that, learn where you learn something. From. You're like, whoa! I won't repeat yeah. that. Well, you know, I mean, I guess there have been a lot of mishaps that have happened on stage over the years for me. Uh, when you perform a lot, you're going to have things go wrong. And, you know, because you're up in your chances, the more shows you do, the more, you know, you're eventually something's going to happen. So, um, I mean, I have had things happen to me from forgetting lyrics to um, literally falling downstairs and losing both shoes. Wow. Um, and the lady on the front row had to hand me my <laughs> shoe. Oh, wow. And then also when I was a, a preteen, I actually went out on stage with a bra hanging on the back of my dress. That was pretty <laughs> horrific for me at that time. Um, but it's funny now. I mean, it's, it was really hilarious just an hour afterwards. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there was it hilarious of, during it. Wasn't hell, hey, no, it wasn't <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> during it. Oh, oh. I was so oh, I was so embarrassed. And um, mm -hmm. and then but then it was funny afterwards. But yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of things that go wrong on stage. And that's just part of it. You know, I'm sure if you're a performer, you know, you've had to deal with things just happening. And really the best advice I can give you is just keep just roll keep, with it. Act like nothing happened. If you yes. the audience feeds mm -hmm. off of your reaction mm -hmm. and if you freeze or if you, you know, get mad or if you show that you're upset or if you go, Oh man, I messed up. Well then they're going to know you messed up. So yeah. uh, that, that's like, even with what we do with this show, you have to roll with it. I mean, yeah. there are times we've learned that sometimes, um, cause again, um, we're connected into our main, um, cable lines, so we're mm -hmm. pretty good. But mm -hmm. sometimes people come in with Wi-Fi and all that that's not very good, so they'll yeah. freeze. Yeah. And, and instead of saying yes. something, we we will just nod our heads uh, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah, like we heard every word because we know eventually free, it's yeah. going to pop back up, yeah. and then we can move on. With yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. You gotta kind of have to act like you're not 
thinking, oh, no, what's going on? Now, Tell granted, if it freezes for about 30, 40 seconds, then we probably make then a comment. Because that, then the that. audience would be like, okay, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> I can't hear that. <laughs> yep, it's just part of it. It's showbiz. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's, that's just crazy. And, and you know, <clears throat> our new segment that we're going to be doing is, of course, going to go a lot heavier than that. It's going to, you know, our goal with our horror story, uh, entertainment horror stories, is really to kind of show some of the red flags that people go through. Because, you know, a lot of people get scammed. Out oh, there. Yes. And oh, I want those type of stories right, when, we start, the wrong when we start this new segment. Mm -hmm. Because what I want yeah. people to realize is say, you know what? Um, this is something to look out for because because there's a lot of red flags if you're open. A lot of times people, they yeah. want the success so much that they just let all that they wear, as they say, those rose colored glasses. You know, they don't see yeah. nothing. Oh, yeah. I mean, this the industry is full of um, people who want to take advantage, but mainly the industry is full of people who are just people. Yeah. And they're, we're human and we're flawed and, mm -hmm. you know, what happens, I think, is people are just all about self and people. That's just that's just human nature. And that's yeah. really. Yeah. But it's it's I think it's really like there's a lot of that type of thing going on in in the entertain in the entertainment world where mm -hmm. people are saying, you know, um, I want to know how I can get ahead. And so they'll do they'll do anything. And um, it can be pretty hurtful. It can you know, I've had a lot I've had a lot of things happen uh, behind the scenes um, in the industry that have been like, wow, I can't believe that person. How can that person sleep at night? You know, that kind wow. of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I got some horror stories for you. If you want to have me back on that show, then we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, because well, the goal of that one is that we're going to have people that, that way, because uh, some people wouldn't want to be their name out there. Of yeah, course. Of course. So we're we'll going to have people kind of type up their horror story, email it to us, and we'll keep it where there's no names on there. And we just Absolutely. read the story and we kind of yeah. comment our thoughts as we're reading yeah. the story. Well, that and, sounds and good. Educational and, and entertainment. entertainment and, and you know, I don't know of any, right. there are other industries that do this, but I haven't seen it done in the entertainment industry. It's like, you know what? We'll be the first. I love that. Y'all, that's so awesome. Y'all are so <laughs> creative and that's great. And it's really good. We need these types of stories out there. And it's especially if you're willing to keep things, you know, names out of it, because yeah. I know a lot of people, they wouldn't want to get sued or things no, like that. We wouldn't right. want to get sued either. No. Right. no. So it's really good. That's really good that you're willing to like put the stories out there because people need to know this is what's happening exactly. in the industry. Um, if you want and to that's the reason, it, And that's the reason why we choose to read the stories because if we, we could have them on there and they could say something all wrong and then, yeah, then, then it causes or something. You know, so out, if they send us a story, we can read it in advance and say, okay, it looks good. Let's just talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's so so now that we talked a lot about that side of it, let's flip mm -hmm. the script and go the other way. What are a few wow moments? And let's talk about the Grand Ole Opry. How many times have you been on it now? I guess I've been on the Opry 23 or 24 times. Oh, wow. Well, um, and it's just been incredible. Uh, the reason why I, I wonder is where I'm like, how many is because I've done like a, one of the outside stage shows as oh, well. So yeah. there are a couple of those. And so I'm like, do you count those? I guess you do. So, <laughs> still uh, there, right? Still there. Yes, yeah. it's, a, it's an Opry show. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. in a different location. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm just so grateful to have been, you know, on that stage as many times as I, as I have. And, um, it's just, uh, yeah, the Opry is a huge highlight, um, performing with the band Perry on American Idol on the American Idol finale. That was a huge mm -hmm. deal to me. Um, I always say I would do that performance like a hundred more times because it was <laughs> so fun and high energy. And you'd probably do it even if it was going to mess up. That'd be fine, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I mean, it, I'm sure something, something probably happened during that performance that wasn't <laughs> perfect, you know, yeah. uh, but it was so much fun um, getting to perform with Vince Gill on the Grand Ole oh, Opry. Wow. Um, it was actually my first time at the Ryman Auditorium. So I got to perform okay. with Vince at the Ryman for my very first performance at the Ryman. So that was, that was such a big deal. Um, another wow moment 
is probably just, you know, having this duet with Dolly and oh, uh, wow. mm -hmm. yeah, just to have such a full circle thing, because if you don't know uh, people who don't know this part of my story, I got my, my start when I was eight years old, portraying a young Dolly Parton in a show about her wow. life story. Mm -hmm. So here I was all these years later after portraying Dolly in this show, then all of a sudden I, you know, reconnect with her and she listens, she hears this song thanks to a friend of mine that played it for her in her dressing room. And, <laughs> wow. And she just wanted to be a part of it. She said, tell Janelle to tell me what she wants me to do. And that's, that's it. So tell us about your new song. So this song is a, a tribute song. I wrote is it. Is it Dolly approved? It sure is. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe Y'all, I can't believe her response to this song. And I will eventually talk about that at some point. Um, but she she loves the song. And that's that means the world to me because, you know, it really was. I was writing it as a thank you to mm -hmm. her um, for singing on Hand Me Downs with me. Yeah. And so I, I wrote it in 2018, which I would have probably released it a lot earlier. But I wanted to get my duet out first because I wanted mm -hmm. this to be a follow up with saying thank you and, and having a tribute to her. Um, so yeah, this song is really fun. It's kind of different from my last couple releases because I've, I've done a lot of serious songs and this one's a lot more, a little sassy, a little fun and um, upbeat. And it's, it talks everything about the kind of outward appearance of Dolly to her inward self and um, talks about how, you know, are, it says, are my lips too bright? Are my clothes too tight? Are my heels too high? Well, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and that's kind of like, you know, just very Dolly-esque and the things that she's known for. She's known for Absolutely. her extreme um, appearance and personality, but then she's also known for her big heart and, yeah. And how she kind of doesn't really, she, she handles controversial things very, very well. It's just kind of like her, it's such a strength of hers. Not everybody uh, has that, a bit the ability to do that. So, um, yeah, this song is all about Dolly Parton and everything that she is and that how we could all use to be a little bit more like Dolly. So. Now you starting a little bit into the actress world. Tell us about that and the movie the Running From My Roots. Yeah, I did a movie called Running From My Roots. And of course, it was thanks to um, some friends. Uh, well, some friends, I guess now they're my friends. But it was um, a casting director who uh, who knew a friend of mine that she had worked with before, Miss Terry Minton. She's an incredible actress and friend of mine for many years. And um, I guess she was sharing that she had a friend that was on American Idol. So they started following along and saw me on American Idol. And um, they knew that they wanted me. This was years later, though, after the show, they wanted me to be the lead role in this movie. Oh, so wow. I got this call and the movie was called Take Two for Faith. And then okay. once I sang this song Running for My Roots that I had written with Jeff Hodge and Stephen Paul, um, I sang this song for the director, sent it to her mm -hmm. and we ended up putting it in the movie and they changed the name of the movie. So <laughs> wow. how does that yeah. feel that you basically changed the name of a movie? <laughs> well, it was pretty cool. I was like, wow, are you sure that you really want it to be called running from my roots? Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have five songs on the soundtrack, which is huge. I mean, I love, I love that. I love just kind of being involved in that side of everything. Like mm. being a part of a soundtrack is cool. Um, but yeah, I, I, I loved doing the movie, honestly. And that was probably because Dina Carter that sang the song <laughs> Strawberry Wine. She oh, she played yeah. my mother in the movie. Oh, and wow. Mm -hmm. We got to live in the same house at the same time of filming this. And uh, yeah, so we got to know each other really well. And it was just, you know, an incredible experience, honestly. Everyone was so great that in the cast that I worked with. I just loved everybody. Now, as you know, um, all that takes a village. It, does. it takes a team. Mm -hmm. And in our opinion, teams never get any love. But on yeah. our show, as you know, teams always get love. So take yeah. a few moments and just tell us about the team that has helped you be who you are. Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, <coughs> I mean, God's on my team. I, I'm very thankful for that. that. <laughs> so, 
that's he's number one. And and then of course my parents. I mean, they're my team, hundred mm-hmm. percent. My the OG team. You know what I mean? They're, <laughs> yeah. the, they're the ones that have been there from literally when I was trying to sing. I'm not was wow. a baby. I was trying to sing. So, um, I'm so grateful to my parents. They never pushed me. They only encouraged me. And uh, that was huge for me because, you know, some kids, they get really pushed into doing things and then they end up hating it later. And I've always loved it because I really think it's because my parents um, only said, hey, you love this. You know, let's try this. Let's do that. Let's go here. Let's go there. They were just so willing. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I've had a manager um, for about five years now, and her name is Stephanie Gastly. And I'm telling you what, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you guys right now if it weren't for her, because Mm -hmm. I just I don't know if I would have had it in me to continue to keep going and keep pushing um, all these years. So because it's honestly I think it's been hard. It's been eight or nine years since I was even on American Idol. And so it's been a long time for me to continue just to on a shoestring budget, as we say, um, you know, continue to put out music and uh, put together shows and do little tours. And, um, you know, so so Stephanie, I just I mean, I I couldn't do this without her and her belief in me. She always say, you know, she works. She works whenever I'm not working and that's, that's how it works. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm, so I'm trying to put my, my phone on a airplane mode. So then (laughs) you're in that dinging for y'all here. Okay. Going on. So anyway, and then of course I now have this incredible label, black sheep label group, and they just believe in me and uh, Susan and Steve. And then, of course, Vanessa and Sherry. I know Sherry has been connected with you guys, Sherry Cranford. And so I'm just so grateful for uh, everybody that is still hanging on because it's (laughs) been a long, (laughs) it's been a roller coaster. (laughs) Well, remember, like they say, every overnight success was a 10-year journey on average. Oh, yeah. I know I've been in Nashville 12 years and um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a journey for sure. Mm -hmm. And the people, I mean, again, that's the cool thing is when you hear people's stories, uh, especially, especially the bigger artists, you, you start to learn that, wow, they've been doing this, you know, like before idol, before Gabby Barrett went on idol, her dad always talks about that. They spent 10 years behind the scenes trying to push her push her that way and you know and people don't see that they see idol she comes out she comes roaring and then bam she explodes but they don't see the 10 years leading up to idol Mm -hmm. no and i and i i'll tell you i don't know why people are kind of wired the way they are but i've been seeing things recently on um american idol people have been commenting on certain people um saying oh well they've already been touring and that you know i i don't they've already made it they said um oh, they said oh they oh they're not like a you know they're not being discovered because you know they've already been discovered and they're already working i'm thinking no you just no, don't know no. you just no don't idea. know like like th- there's a reason why if someone is currently you know busting it to be on the road and do shows and be in nashville um you know that doesn't mean that they shouldn't try to yep. Be on American Idol. They're lucky that they they even be breaking even. A lot of them are are just breaking even, if that. Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is an expensive business. It is so hard to stay in this business when it comes to finances. A lot of people have to give up because they run out of money. And so that's why we all strive for the record deal, because Mm -hmm. that's where the the backing comes in. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm thinking, you know, people just don't know what what people go through. And they (laughs) just because we're touring and just because we're still going and we're still trucking, (laughs) it doesn't mean that we've made it necessarily. (laughs) So it means that we're blessed and we're able to do what we love. And that's and, you know, that I mean, honestly, if I could just tour for the rest of my life and um put out music that's good enough for me it absolutely is um you just got to find the ways to do it so the finances to be able to make it happen and uh, even when you're not making a lot of money and i love that we're talking about this because like you said you know a lot of people they make these comments and they don't realize that you know that the work that they're doing you know 
Bef yeah. You want to be that person that's doing all this work before you go on idle because then that's only going to make yeah. it that much more powerful because the odds of you winning idle are slim. So you use that as a stepping stone to get to that that's next right. level, not necessarily to win. That's right. You do it for the exposure and for the experience. Um, I was just really into, I love a challenge. And so I was just like ready for the challenge. And um, <laughs> someone said that it, accent. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> I'm from New York. You know that. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> So speaking of teams, we have a third yes. co-host, as you know, our we little 10-year-old. Yes. So Sandy's going to go get him. Yeah, I'll get him. And, and our three-year-old, that when she gets older, she'll be plugged into the stove, too. <laughs> oh. So as she's getting him, what's kind of next for you? Well, next is really promoting What Would Dolly Do? And then I have some other songs, some other music that's coming out, right? You know, kind of close, um, probably this summer. So I'm very, very excited about just having music to put out there because I recorded a lot of stuff um, in 2020 or 2021. So now I can put it out there and let the world hear it. And, you know, music for me, you know, the reason why I release music that I've written is because I just, I writing is therapy for me. And you hope that that can also, you know, resonate with people too, and that it helps them in any way. Exactly. I love that philosophy. Because again, you know, that's one of the things that we've learned within music. Like even Sandy talks about that music when she was in high school, got her through all the bullying that happened. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Wow. For sure. <laughs> I, I understand that. <laughs> all right, here he is. Hi, hi, Janelle Opera. So hi. what's your favorite food? Hey, we're my favorite foods. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you what I love. Petros. I know you might not know what that is. So Petro is for me, it's, you know, for a lot of people, it's a, a, uh, I guess they call it a Frito pie, but it's chili and you do Frito chips and cheese and sour cream. And that is one of my favorite meals ever. All right. What's yours? My, my favorite food's pizza. Pizza? Oh, I love pizza. I would love to have some pizza right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. It's mm. funny. So many times people have told us after the show that, okay, I'm getting pizza. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I could eat cheese right now, I'm not allowed to eat cheese right now for certain reasons. I, I'm Because of my daughter, she's allergic to dairy. Oh, wow. So um, I'm, I'm not eating any dairy products. So I am really wanting some pizza right now. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So what's your favorite TV show and movie? My favorite TV show or movie? Hmm. TV show and movie. TV what show be, and movie. But, well, one of my favorite TV shows of all time has got to be The Golden Girls. So I Good love one. The Golden Girls. They're hilarious. And I I was – how old are you, Christopher? I'm 10. You're 10? Whenever I was 11, I was watching The Golden Girls. That was, like, one of my <laughs> favorite shows. Isn't that funny? Um, and so, uh, yeah, I love I love The Golden Girls. And my, one of my favorite hmm, – what's my favorite movie? One of my – well – one of my favorite movies is it's been my one of my favorites since I was a kid. Um, is Little Rascals. Have you ever seen the the newer Little Rascals movie? Uh, I, I have. Think he has. Man, that is a funny movie. I think it came out in the nineties, and you would probably love that movie. And I can quote I can quote so many you know <laughs> lines from that movie because I watched it so many times as a kid. It's still one of my favorite movies ever. Because what's yours? My favorite TV show is SpongeBob and my favorite movie is The Minions. All right. I love it. I need yeah. to see The Minions. I've never seen any of those movies. So, yeah, even our little three year old loves The Minions. I mean, we could be walking in a mall, and if there's a store with a minion in it, she has to go inside. <laughs> oh, they have so a great brand, I tell you. Oh, all right. Well, it's so good to see you. Bye, honey. <laughs> Yeah, he definitely loves to be on this, as you know, from a year ago when you were on. Yes, he's grown so much. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's wow. five foot two. <laughs> he's almost taller than me now. He soon will be at 10 years old. Yeah, he's like five foot two. In fact, yeah. when he was last checked, at the, he was five foot two. He might even be taller than that now. Might be. Yeah, wow. He's really That's in a growing phase. He's going right to be now. tall. Wow, I love yeah. it. He's so yeah, they, sweet. Uh, 
Yeah, they, they had to do some bone checks because he's growing faster than he should. And I think they said yeah. bone wise, he's like a 12 or 13 year old, 13 year old, 13 and a half. Wow. But, but he's he's still OK where it's an OK level right now. So, so he, he's, he's probably going to be really big. big. Tall boy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all good. Yeah, he's okay. growing. That's the most important thing. So the next <laughs> question, I know your answer would be Dolly. So outside of Dolly, who would you love to co-write with? Who would I love to co-write with? Hmm. We already know Dolly would be the number one. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, Vince Gill and I—we talked a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, a few times we've talked a few times about writing, and it just never worked out. Oh, wow. We usually—it's awesome. I mean, he's—that's just how incredible he is. We usually—it's not anything about business. Whenever I see him, like usually. <clears throat> We'll go have breakfast. So oh, that's yeah. whenever I see him, we're having breakfast and it's, that's, you know, we're not writing music or anything. We're just talking about life. So um, Vince would be, you know, up there, of course, on the list. Um, hmm. Who else would be one of my, I mean, I'd say Vince after Dolly, it'd be Vince, you know? So yeah. So this yeah. probably has a thousand answers to this question, but what's a song you've heard you wish you wrote? You know, it's crazy. This there is a song that is not even a famous song. It's not a number one. It's it's um, a song called "When You Kiss Me," um, and it's uh, by an artist named Mags Duvall. Oh, wow. And um, I mean, it's I just I hear this song and I feel like it's so it sounds so classic. And it, there's something special about this song in particular. Like I could think, oh, well, maybe I could write something like that. Or someone could hear it and think, oh, yeah, well, I'll write something like that. It is. A, it is just it's that song. Like that song is that song. There's nothing else like it. It just sounds so classic. And so um, the melody, it just gets me. And so and I love the lyrics, but it's most mostly the melody. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's. I mean, I just wish I'd written that song. <laughs> I heard it. I was like, oh, man, I wish I'd written that. <laughs> so where do you want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in five years? Hopefully still making music and still um, taking care of my family and pro hopefully providing some for my family. You know, hopefully I'll be successful enough to where I can do that. And um, I and have hope your family come with you on tour. That's right. Yeah, that's all you can hope is that if you get, you know, you get uh, the opportunities to play, that you're also, um, pro you know, able to take them with you. And that way you don't have to be away from your family. So that would be a huge goal, goal of mine. I um, hope to uh, just music is always involved, whether that is, um, you know, music, just doing music, um, you know, releasing music and touring, or if that's, you know, in a really big way or really small way, or if it's just writing for other people, um, I could see myself writing for other people and, um, or with, you know, other artists and stuff. Um, and that's honestly just, hopefully I'll be doing music and, and taking care of my family. <laughs> so let's look even deeper down the road. Let's say 15 years down the road and you're a success on a grand scale, whatever that looks like for you, you're there. What do you hope you never forget? Wow. I hope that I never forget the people that helped me get to wherever I am. Um, I, I just hope that I, I hope I don't change. I hope I remember who I am. That's what I that's really what I hope is that I remember who who I've always been. And, you know, what you do, you're going to change in little ways because life changes you and life affects you um, and experiences mold you. But mm -hmm. uh, I just I just hope that I don't I hope that I remember and uh, who I am. Yeah. Oh, great. Answer. Outside of all of that, who yeah. I am, yeah. really, who I am. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. so what are some things that inspire you? Uh, well, I'm inspired, man, I'm inspired by any, anyone or anything that is super authentic. Um, I love, I just love people and things that are just very original and, and one of a kind and, and, 
um, that that's very inspirational to me. Um, I love when I meet a person and there's nobody like them and they're just so they're so comfortable in their own skin and they're not looking around trying to be like everybody else. They're just confident in who they are. And that that inspires me because that's that's how I try to be. I, I try to just be myself and um there, I'm, I don't know if I'll even remember the quote, but um, I don't even know if my brain's not working right now. <laughs> so, but there's a quote that that um, I think it was saying I'd rather be. Um, and our quote that I've always liked is you can only be a first class you and a second class someone else. That's right. It's so true. Well, it's like you'd rather be successful in originality than you know than rather than fail or I'd, I'd rather fail in originality than to like succeed being like everyone else you know yeah. and um so it's that that type of quote and i just i just love that because it's so true um i feel like you are succeeding if you're just yourself because there's no one like you absolutely yeah, that's like i remember when we launched this show in 2020 i was I'm um, talking to one of my Nashville friends and I remember asking him what advice he'd give us. And I'll never forget because it kind of goes along with what you just said, because mm -hmm. he said, whatever you do, be and stay authentic. He says, you could tell every Bobby right. Bones joke. You can tell every Ty Bentley joke. He says, and you might even be good at it and create an audience. Who knows? He says, yeah. but the day will come when authentic Chris comes out. And when yeah. that day comes, you're going to lose every bit of your audience because they were never attracted to authentic Chris. So if yeah. you just be authentic from day one, your show may grow slower, but you'll grow with the right audience. That's right. And you can only fake it for so long. Oh, so true. You know, you can't, it just, it's just the way that it is. Like you, you were made to do certain things like that, that only you can do. And so if you try to do what everyone else is doing, then it's just like, eventually it's just, you can't, you can't, keep up it's hard it's hard to um to be something that you're not and i just think that yeah it's eventually you're gonna it's gonna come out so you might as well just always be yourself exactly, exactly. and what would you like for your legacy to be in music what would you like to be most known and remembered for um i think i'd like to be most <laughs> remembered for the fact that i cared about people i mean that my music the only reason, you know, I could I could do music, you know, if I wanted to, I could just do music and and do it on a smaller scale or, you know, be in um, do continue to do like I did in Pigeon Forge and perform there. And that was so very, very satisfying to me. I loved being on stage every day with talented people and doing all of that. But, you know, um, I, I think that for me, uh, I, I try to do everything on a I'm only trying to continue to be on a, a larger scale because it's about reaching as many people as you can. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I just would want to be known for loving people and for uh, putting music out, like trying to reach people through my music. And I don't know, I guess my, my heart, I hope that my heart stays good enough and is good enough um, to leave a lasting impression so yes and if you could say anything to your fans and followers what do you want to tell them well of course i would want to say thank you uh for being with me throughout all of this all of the craziness and all the ups and downs and um yeah i just want to say thank you and also want to say just stay tuned because everything is i mean I'm, i've got a lot more music coming out that i'm really passionate about that i've recorded that needs to be heard and so that's why i'm moving forward with putting it out there and so thank you all so much i hope you love my new music so as we start to close out here um i have a two-part question here they both kind of go together and you'll see what i mean in a minute but first part of the question is if somebody wanted to do what you do what advice would you give them i would say do do as much as you can um there, there are two things I would say. Do as much as you can, you know, work hard. It's about it's about staying consistent. And I mean, I struggle with that myself. So I'm, I'm telling you this as I'm telling myself this. But also I would say, you know, like do not 
do what you can. Don't do whatever it takes. And I've said that quite a few mm-hmm. times. You know, there are a lot of people, they're willing to do whatever it takes. And that that's kind of a dangerous place to be in because a lot of times, a lot of times, you know, you might, you know, um, hurt a friend in the process. You might, you know, not remember where you came from. You might step on somebody to get where you want to be. And that's not worth it to me. It's not worth it in the end. Um, so, uh, that would be one thing I would say. Um, also I would say, um, save, save all the money that you've got, (laughs) save every penny that you can. It, because if I had known how much it was going to be about um, putting money into things, I would have been a little bit more mindful of that, even though I tried the best I could. I mean, did the best I could. But at the same time, you think, wow, it really is. Talent is expected. Um, you know, you should you should hope someone is has talent. But really what helps them cut through and helps them get that song to number one or helps them to maybe even get a record deal or like a a major deal um, is sometimes the money that you have to put behind your craft. Mm -hmm. So the second part of that question is since you've basically grown up in the entertainment business since you were little, Mm -hmm. what advice would you give that parent who's, who's got a child that wants to do what you do? Okay. Um, I would say communicate with your child constantly because in this industry, um, you know, anything can happen. You know, you want to stay uh, connected with them to remind them of who they are because there's a lot of pressures in the industry. And, you know, if if you, um, you know, you don't want them to kind of be led astray in a sense um, and you want them to kind of stay on, you know, a path of, of staying focused on their music and not get into, you know, drugs and alcohol and things like that, then, you know, stay communicating with your child, know what page that they're on, know who they're hanging around. And um, that's what I would suggest because it's, a, it is, that's, that's just the nature of the beast. It is an industry that, you know, it's, that's kind of the atmosphere sometimes. <laughs> Love that. So as we close out, mm-hmm. tell everybody how they can find you. Well, you can find me on JanelleArthur.com. That is my website. And then of course, all the social media um, handles are like on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook. Um, I'm all, I'm on all of the social media networks and TikTok as well. So uh-huh. <laughs> love that. You know, we really enjoyed having you back on the show. We, and we look forward to having Thank you back you. again for more updates. Thank y'all so much. I, I just always enjoy talking to you guys. So you're thanks. welcome back Same anytime. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. You have a great Thank day. Thank y'all. You too. Bye-bye.